Welcome to the Principles to Live By broadcast with our pastor and founder, Dr. Bernard Grant, pastor of Showers of Blessing Christian Center, one of the most loving churches in all the world. And now, let's go into today's life-changing message. Hello, this is Pastor Grant. Many have gave faith a bad rap because what some people call faith is just foolishness, is just presumption. We need to know the difference. Because I believe God is really sending a move as never before in the land. And for those believers that know how to operate by faith, remember now without faith it's impossible to please God, we're going to see dynamic moves of the Spirit of God. So let's go on to today's message, Faith, Foolishness, or Presumption. I'm in my set place and he's my pastor. But you know what? My feet hurt for one thing. And... <laughs> And, and, and you'd be absolutely amazed by the seventh day. It would have been all messed up. They would have never got to no seventh day. So, 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 so watch this. God changes his workmen, Stuart, but he doesn't change his principles of operation. So now Joshua, look at verse 30. Are you there in Hebrews 11, verse 30? By faith, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down, fell down flat. After they were encircled for what? for seven days. What? All you want me to do, Joshua, you want us to walk around the walls of Jericho because God said it. Now watch this. God gave them the instructions. They followed the instructions. It didn't make sense to the natural mind, but it was not foolishness or presumption. Let me give you a third illustration. And I'm not going to turn there. You can just jot it down. 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. Naaman, everybody say Naaman. Naaman was the commander of the army of the king of Syria. He was a great and an honorable and noble man, but yet he had leprosy. He heard that there was a man of God by a little girl, told him there was a man of God, prophet of God, that would get him healed if he went to him. So he goes to him, man of God, don't come out to meet this great man, Naaman. He sends a messenger to him. So now Naaman is offended, okay, because God ain't doing it like he think he ought to do. How many know you can't box God in battle? You, it, no, 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 God will come another way because he's God. I, I, know, I always know what he going to do but I don't know how we gonna do it and when he gonna do it. I know what God gonna do, he gonna honor his word. But now how he gonna do it, how he gonna pull it off? That's why you gotta be nice to people. You don't know who God gonna use. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, you better be nice to me cause it ain't gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm going to millionaire status in a look. Okay. <laughs> Amen. So God tells him to go dip seven times in the muddy Jordan. And he said, listen, I got, I got, we got rivers of Botha and Fafa and all these kind of rivers. He started naming right here at my own nice, clean rivers. You want me to go in the muddy Jordan? And by the way, when I went to Israel, went to Jerusalem, went to Israel, it's still muddy. No, no, they were baptizing folk in that water. Wow. Yeah, and they asked me, did I want to be baptized in the Jordan like Jesus was? I said, you out your mind. I've been baptized. I'm not getting that nasty water. That's some nasty water. I don't care if Jesus stood in the... I saw something floating in it. Look at, I ain't getting that water. I've been baptized back a long time ago, pretty long. <laughs> so, so we see three biblical instructions of God giving instructions to individuals, and yet it didn't make no sense to the natural mind. But watch this. It wasn't foolishness, and it wasn't presumption. Now, there are three common denom de denominators. In all three of these examples, or all three cases, there's a common denominator in all three. Three common denominators in all three. Number one, this is important. This is very important. Even though it didn't make sense, God's getting ready to speak to you so clearly about your situation. Oh, my goodness. I'm so happy for you. I'm telling you, Bruce, this thing going to be so clear, Sister White. Now, watch this. Three things, though. Number one, the actions resulted in success. Every single time, even though it didn't make sense to the natural mind, and sometimes when God gives you instructions, remember now, the instructions that you ignore. You don't want to ignore at the instruction, but, but when he gives you the instructions, many times it won't make sense to your natural mind, and it didn't make sense to them. Dip seven times, walk around the walls. Come on now. 
build an ark, it's going to rain. All of that don't make no sense in natural mind. But notice the actions resulted in success. Positive results. The faith actions produce result, positive results. Now, I've been, in, I've been saved about over 35 years, and I've seen it, Brother Burson. I've seen individuals tell, they say, God told me, God said, and then they do what they said that God told them to do, and it destroys their marriage, their family, it tears up their whole life. That ain't God. That's foolishness and presumption. The second common denominator in all three of these examples is number two, God had spoken. God has spoken. God said something. Did you notice that God said it? Amen. Amen. And by the way, let me just say this. Uh, just jot it down. Jeremiah 23, verse 31 and 32. Jeremiah 23, verse 31 and 32 tells us that God doesn't like you connecting his name to everything. God ain't got diarrhea of the mouth. But in these three biblical scriptural illustrations, we see that God told them. Faith begins where the will of God is known. All three of them had a word from God. God spoke through the prophet of God to Naaman. God spoke to Noah. God spoke to Joshua. They had a word from God. Tell them God said something. God said something. Then third of all, the third common denom denominator in all three examples is these men were not initiating, watch this, initiating something on their own and attempting to force God to do something or to honor it. Now, this is critical. They didn't pray. They didn't fast for this. They simply responded. They were responding. It wasn't self-initiated. Noah didn't come up with no ark and flood. God told him this. Amen? Amen. They weren't initiating something on their own and attempting to force God to do something. Now, what is foolishness? Let me give you, let's define our terms now. I, what is foolishness? Because you got to avoid foolishness. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you two things that will keep you out of foolishness. And I've seen a lot of foolishness in the body of Christ in these 35 years. They called it faith. And, and, and folk, when they called it faith, even though it wasn't faith, people backed off faith because they called it faith. But just because they called it that don't mean it was that. Many times it was foolishness and presumption. What is foolishness, Pastor? Foolishness are actions that are, actions that are unwise, lacking good judgment, Silly, stupid, and ill-advised. Now, I've, I've done some foolish things, as I've been saying, in the name of faith. I did, well, you know, when you know better, you do better. <laughs> but foolishness are actions that are unwise, lacking good judgment, silly, stupid, and ill-advised. What's foolishness? Get that back to me. What's foolishness? Because you're going to avoid this. What is foolishness? Actions that are unwise, lacking good judgment, silly, stupid, and ill-advised. Now, there are two things that will keep you out of foolishness. Foolishness ignores the law of growth and the law of preparation. In order for you to stay out of foolishness, you think you're in faith, but you're in foolishness. The way you stay away from foolishness, stay out of foolishness. How I stay out of foolishness, Pastor? You don't ignore the law of growth and the law of preparation. For example, the law of growth. 1 Timothy 3, 6 says, don't put a, a novice in leadership. At least they're being lifted up with pride. You don't put nobody, a novice, in leadership. Jot down uh, 2 Thessalonians 1, 3. 2 Thessalonians 1, 3 says your faith grows. So you cannot ignore the law of growth, the law of growth. David said, I killed the lion and the bear. I got a track record that gives me confidence for this next giant. The question is, can you look back and see what you've accomplished? 
When you are in faith for something, this, this, this is, faith is not magic, it's progressive. See, you got to ask yourself, you, you just got to make the next step, make the next step, make sure that it's bigger, better, and nicer than the last step, whether it's a house, a car, and when you're, and when you're not in competition or you're not competing with anybody, tell somebody, don't compare, don't compare. Yeah, th see, there's no pressure. There's no pressure. Amen? So, so, you, so, the, so the kingdom of God, everything in the kingdom of God is progressive. You'll never write the $1,000 check until you write the $100 check. Amen. Amen. Amen? So don't ignore the law of growth. And then secondly, don't ignore the law of preparation. Preparation includes everything. Ministry, family, finances, preparation time is not wasted time. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. You, you got to understand, some people don't realize, especially in ministry, just because you call doesn't mean you're prepared. Right. See, see, three things go together. There's call, preparation, separation. The apostle Paul was called by God on a Damascus road. Jesus himself called him in Acts chapter 9. After Acts chapter 9, you know what Paul did? He went into the desert for three years in an Arabian desert. Galatians chapter 1 verse 17 and 18 tells us. So for three years, he's preparing. Then in Acts 13, the Holy Ghost said, separate me. Acts 13 verses 2 and verse 4. The Holy Ghost, because the Holy Spirit is the one who decides your assignment. You do not decide what you are or where you're supposed to be. And you can have an anointing for some, an anointment and an appointment are two different things. Just because, and I tell you, just because you're not the general doesn't mean the army doesn't need you. A great sergeant, you can be a great sergeant but a poor general. Amen. And we got to under, that's why I believe it's critical that you spend more time with God until you know his voice. My wife can call me from anywhere in the world, and I know that's her. Amen? But I've, 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 I've known people that I met once or twice. They call me. I didn't know who it was. I, we don't spend time together that much. Amen? One of the greatest things you can do if you're in the valley of decision, and you've got a decision to make, and you really don't know which way to go, is slow down, pump your brakes, and say, okay, now, Lord, this is what I want to do, but what do you think about it? How I many you ever talk to God like that? What do you think about it? I mean, I mean, this is what I want to do. The Bible says, jot it down, Proverbs 16, 9. Proverbs 16, 9 says that man's responsibility is the plan. The Holy Spirit or God's responsibility is to direct. We're supposed to plan. Plan your work, work your plan. You ought to have a plan. But... In fact, until you get a plan, you're not going to get direction. Direction comes after planning. And the reason y'all ain't getting no direction, some of y'all, is because you ain't got no vision written down. He said, write the vision, make it plain. If you get a plan, he'll start giving you direction. But now watch this. Pray about it. Watch this in the spirit. Now, I'm talking to somebody here because, you, you, this, see, you, God's going to give you direction. You, you, this, go to him. Be honest. Say, Lord, this is what I want to do. Now, what do you think about it? And then, and then every, you know, daily, just, just take, pray about it in the spirit. Give God time to speak to you. Get past the, igni the initial excitement of doing it. I tell people, don't, don't make major, major purchases when you're excited. Don't let nobody pressure you into a timeshare. Don't let nobody pressure you into nothing. Oh, that looks good on you, darling. You need to get it today. No, no, I ain't getting nothing. No, 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 no. Too much money. And I, got, I got to wait for my I, 24 hours later. I got to let the excitement wear down. I ain't buying no car today. You crazy? No, no, no. I mean, let me get, let me, I, I, you know, that new car smell. I don't roll that thing. I'm all excited. I look good. And I, hey! But I ain't figured nothing out. I ain't, I'm, I'm, I'm all in my emotions. I got to wait till my emotions die down. Amen. If I say, wait before the Lord, wait before the Lord. So the way to avoid foolishness is never to ignore the law of growth and never ignore the law of preparation.
Preparation time is not wasted in time. Jesus spent 30 years for a three and a half year ministry. He prepared 30 years. Moses prepared 40 years before he began his ministry. 40 years. Preparation time is never wasted time because you can think you're ready for something, but God knows better. And just because you can quote some scriptures, hello somebody, don't mean you're ready for it, what God has for you. Amen. Just because you're horny right now don't mean you need a man. Because until you can do without a man, you ain't ready for a man. I'm going to go over here. I ain't scared of y'all. I ain't scared. Well, he said, yeah. Because after the newness of that sex wear off, you're dealing with a person. And you around here don't want to cook you no breakfast. I don't want you to do Don't bother me. I want to sleep late. You can't sleep late. You better get up. Okay. <laughs> go with me. Go with me. To, uh, this is Dr. Grant. I want to invite every man to our next men's fellowship, August the 13th at 10 a.m. This is going to be a dynamic meeting of brothers who are coming together in this season, in this culture, in our society where the spirit of division is running rampant. We're going to make a bold statement. I'm inviting all my brothers from various denominations and backgrounds. They tell me in one city the Crips and the Bloods are coming together. Surely, we brothers in Christ Jesus can come together for time around the Word of God and discussion and deal with our issues and our questions. I'm telling you, August the 13th at 10 a.m., I believe in the power of unity. I hold in my hand a telephone book, and if you, you know, singly, if I wanted to tear some pages out of here just one by one, it's no problem. Just You can just do, I could do this all day, one by one, all day long. But if you put these pages together, and I try to rip this book, boy, that's, vi that's very difficult to try to rip it because they're together. When we come together as brethren, I'm telling you right now, the power of God, the commanded blessing is released. So I want all of my brothers to meet me here August the 13th at 10 a.m. is going to be dynamic. Luke chapter number one, Luke chapter number one. Let's look at presumption. What I'm talking about here, what's my subject today? Faith, foolishness, or presumption. My pastor wrote a book on it. He got some CDs on it. It's a classic book. Best book you could ever get on faith. Faith, first of all, my pastor wrote the best book on faith, How Faith Works, Apostle Frederick K.C. Price. And then he wrote a book, Faith, Foolishness, or Presumption. Save you a lot of heartache. Amen. What is presumption? Presumption means I'll put it on the screen. To take for granted something is true. To take for granted something is true. Or presumption is arrogant behavior. Here's what presumption says. Presumption says this. If I do this, God will do that. If I, if I, I ain't heard him. If I do this, God will do that. The question is, did God tell you? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 4, verses uh, 5 through 7, Satan told Jesus, took him to the top of the temple, and he said, jump. Jesus, jump. Now, God didn't tell Jesus to jump, but Satan said, jump. Throw yourself down. Jump. And God will do this without a word from God. God just bless it because I did it. That is called presumption. Here's, here, here's some acts of presumption. You know, you, 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 when you hear people, watch this, presumption. If I marry this unsaved person, God will save him or her. So now you missionary dating. Even though God said be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Presumption says this. If I throw away my medicine, God will heal me. If I take my glasses off and throw them down and crush them and drive to the house. <laughs> The Lord will heal me. That's presumption. Presumption says, if I quit my job, if I quit my job, I got a wife and folk, if I quit my job, God will bless me with another one. Not if he didn't tell you. If I quit my job, God will bless my business. If I engage in unprotect, unprotected sex, God will, you just fill in the blank. If I claim him or her as my spouse, 
Back in 1986, when I was planning on getting married, there was 10 women that had claimed me, told folk that God told them that I was supposed to be their husband. 10! <laughs> Tell somebody, somebody lied. Somebody was lying. <laughs> but presumption says if I claim him or if I claim her as my spouse, God will give him or her to me. If I just walk up to him and say, I claim you. <laughs> you know that wouldn't be fair though, would it? That wouldn't be fair. Somebody can just claim you and you ain't got no choice. Okay. That ain't right. That ain't fair. <laughs> All right. Presumption says if I get the house, if I get the house, I ain't heard from God, but if I haul off and get the house, God will foot the bill. Presumption says if I start a church, God will send people and bless it. So you got thousands of small little churches. Thousands, maybe even millions of small churches. Ten members for five, ten years with sinners dying everywhere. All that is presumption. If God tells you something, he'll bless it. But if you're doing it, listen to that past, I'm almost with, if you're doing it without hearing from God, you're taking for granted that God is going to do something he didn't tell you to do. If it's his will, then yes, it is his bill. If he guides, he provides. If he leads, he feeds. Whatever God orders, he always pays for. Look at Luke chapter 1. I need this out of the Amplified Bible. Inherent in the command is the capacity. Luke 1 verse 37 says what, somebody? Luke 1 37. Let me say this. Let me say it like this. Why you find? Whenever God commits his word to you, he also commits his power to bring it to pass. Whenever God commits his word to you, he also commits his power to bring it to pass. There's power in the promise. And you're going to need the promise because it's, it's probably going to get tough. And when it gets tough, you got to know that you heard him. And what he spoke to you in the light, don't doubt it in the dark or because it's tough right now. Because God always comes through. He's a covenant-keeping God, and he cannot lie. There is enough power in the word of God to make it happen. Inherent in the command is the capacity. First, uh, Luke 1, chapter 1, verse 37, read that. 137. For with God, nothing is ever impossible. The Amplified Bible says what? Amplified. I got the Amplified? 137. Okay, so no word from God. One translation says, no word from God will be without power or impossible of fulfillment. No word from God will be without power or impossible of fulfillment. So we need to wait before the Lord. Spend some time this week. Amen. Lord, and be honest. Say, God, this is what I wanted. This was, I believe in my heart now. But what would you have me to do in this particular situation? And then take time to pray in the spirit about it. Amen. You can take five minutes a day. Just pray in the spirit on the way to work. On the way to, just, 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 go, just pray in the Holy Ghost. And as you pray in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost will make it clear. Till you will begin to know in your Noah. Because what God is going to do in your life, he's going to accelerate some things. And we don't have time, you know, for these faith mistakes. I done made them. I've done some foolish things. I've done things presumptuously. And when I think back on it, I'll be like, man, God didn't tell me that. That was just shoot. Sometimes you're looking at what other people are doing. But God didn't tell God got a tailor-made word for you and you alone. You're not a stepchild. You're his child. He'll speak to you too. Take your plan to him. And he'll give you direction. Amen? Amen? Every head bow, every eye closed. Nobody moving, nobody leaving. We're going to pray. Heavenly Father, right now, I'm asking that you seal this word in the heart of your people. Seal it so the devil won't steal it in Jesus' name. Now we're heads about eyes are closed. That's a dynamic message. You've got to have a copy of it. Because many times we think we're in faith. But really, it's foolishness or it's presumption. But remember now, 
because when you hear from God, when you got a word from God, you'll always see some positive results. God cannot lie. If he said it, he'll bring it to pass. Some things we're doing, we're putting God's name on it that he really, really didn't tell us to do. So this message will bring balance. I just think balance is the key to life. And sometimes we get off into one extreme or the other, get off into a ditch. I believe we ought to stay right there in the middle of the road. And when we follow the word of God, we'll live a balanced life. Until our next broadcast, this is Dr. Bernard Grant saying, remember these words. The word works when you work the word. For more information, contact us toll free at 866-724-7495 or you can reach us at Child's of Blessing Christian Center, 1740 East Raleigh Boulevard, Rocky Mount, North Carolina 27801 or by web at showersofblessing.org. And remember, the word works when you work the word.